Welcome back to Montreal. It's Alex Belfield at the Comedy Festival talking to the geniuses of comedy. And this year, a man who's really stuck out for me is Mike Wilmot. How are you? Very good, thank you. As a genius, I'm doing fine. You're funny and you're different and you're loud and you're outrageous and you're extremely confident and they're all the things you need to make a good comedian, aren't they, really? Uh, yeah, it took me 24 years to get the, the confident part going. But uh, yeah, you, yeah. You, if you look like you think it's funny, it works. It appears to me when I watch you, you've got a funny bone. There's just something inherently funny about you. Um, yes, many would call it a disorder. <laughs> but uh, thank God for comedy. That's all I'm saying. Otherwise, I'd be in an institute somewhere. You've mentioned you've done this for a long while. Does it take a long while to become confident and good at it? I mean, you can't be born a comedian, can you? Uh, no, but I, it takes, I don't know. It, it takes time to realize you're in it for the long haul. And you realize you're just gonna have to you're just gonna have to enjoy yourself to keep yourself from going crazy. Like I, I years ago, I had the you know dreams of uh, you know yachts and mansions. I've now made that more of a cottage and a canoe. <laughs> so I'm happy. And it is a proper job for you. I mean, we're looking at your schedule here at the Montreal Comedy Festival. You did three shows a night last week. Yeah. You're here, there, and everywhere. You're really earning your money, aren't you? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, it's, but you know, it's jokes. So I can't. The only time I really bitch and whine, I don't know why I looked around there, but <laughs> is moan is when my wife is here because if I make it sound as though it's hard work, she tends to ease off on me a bit. My hands have rubbed raw from microphones and I've had to tell almost 15 minutes of jokes. So yeah, it's silly. The thing about you as well, it seems very believable. You talk about your age, you talk about your life and your wife and how difficult and terrible it is and how awful it is and how near to suicide you are. We can all relate to that. I would hope so. And funny, if you look at any of my older Just for Laughs, I've been doing it chronologically. I looked a lot more happy about it when I said, you know, the <laughs> wife and I have been together for five years than my new we've been together for 22-year jokes. It's, a, it's totally two different jokes. But yeah, I take it. I, it is my... I let it out on the... It's, it's cheaper than therapy. What I love about you as well is you do actually have jokes. There are punchlines. There seems to be a, a new thing of comedians who come on stage and just talk, and if you happen to come across something whimsical, you can laugh. Well, I'm dead set against whimsy. I'm dead set against... That's, I, I hate whimsy. I, some guys pull it off. I don't think I could ever whimsy it up. And I talk in punchlines. That's when I know I'm finished a sentence. The other thing I like about you, we had a comedian in Britain called Bob Monkhouse who's no longer with us, and he did things with his hands like you do. You you punctuate what you're saying with an expression and with a hand movement. I didn't know that, and that's... Yeah, we're on radio, right? Yeah. All right, so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to demonstrate. But you were doing it earlier when you were talking. I, yeah, well, now I'm thinking about it. No, I, I've always... I, it's, it's my constant crave for attention. I'm the one moving in the corner. Yeah, that's, that's part of the disorder, I think. I just basically, if you don't laugh, to hell with you. <laughs> I got, I got bigger, bigger fish to fry. But a good audience has a great time. A bad audience, well, you know, I can't blame an audience. I hope some people have a good time. Now, I, it's really more about me now. I got to work this stuff out. I hope you laugh along the way. But otherwise, it's, it's, it's all me now. It's a selfish, selfish thing to say. And damn it, I'm proud of being selfish. What about this lifestyle? It's not very glamorous waking up knowing you've got to be on the road for three days to get to do a half-hour gig to stay in some crappy hotel. Yeah, there are a lot of people that think this is a lifestyle. It's, it's the absolute opposite of any kind of style of life <laughs> at all. I just, I just went downstairs to a shopping mall and to pick up like burgers for my wife and kid. That's, and that's my adventure today. <laughs> The rest of the time I got to, you know, you sit around thinking of stupid jokes and then try to work a nap in before you tell 15 minutes of jokes. <laughs> Do you really need a nap to tell 15 minutes of jokes? No, it's just I'm very lazy. <laughs> I, I need a nap because I can't, I can't sleep because uh, I'm, I'm just thinking jokes. <laughs> I was on stage and my, I had two dreams last night. Both of them, I have to get out of this. I've got another week. And as to being here at the festival, of course, people are here to laugh. Is it easier to entertain at a place like this than turning up on a Thursday night at some club in the middle of nowhere? Oh, God, yeah. People, uh, they put some thought into the ticket purchase. It's not like, oh, Christ, the bowling alley's full. Let's go, <laughs> let's go to the Chuckle Hut or whatever, you know? And, and that's most, and most uh, clubs, and this goes to England, Canada, everywhere, full of hen nights now. You know, you don't find that many hen nights. You know, it's 50 bucks a ticket. People are coming out specific for the jokes. This is when you should write. This is for all the kids out there try to do comedy. When it's a festival like this, that's this is the best time to loosen up and enjoy yourself. Don't get all tense and think it's do or die, because nothing's do or die. You know, just it, this is going to be the easiest it's going to get. They, they listen to every, every, every little bit of it, you know. They're, you're not competing over a crowd at all, you know. It's, it's perfect for jokes. 
And Jimmy Carr says you're one of the best in the business. Does it matter to you what other people think? Only Jimmy Carr. <laughs> No, I love Jimmy. No, and he's a sweetheart. Most of the Brett guys, especially his generation, because I was out before they started. And, uh, and, and you know, and I like to ruffle their feathers backstage when they were kids. And now they're all doing better than me. <laughs> so they're, they're, they get the last laugh. So, yeah, I know I love it. I, and I think Jimmy's a sweetheart, too. Just making a living doing stand-up has been a blessing for years now. You know, I, my hand, feel those hands. That, that, those baby bottoms buddy <laughs> i haven't picked up anything heavy in years they've never done a day's work they've they? never done a day's work i years ago maybe i think i lift i moved a box very finally about your voice you're completely unique and i worry about you because you give so much and it's so different and you come on with such complete energy how does it last through a comedy festival like this uh caffeine caffeine if you ever see the deadliest catch it's a cable show about these alaskan crab fishermen that they fish for 24 hours in a row and they get like an hour's sleep and then fish. so it, wait it, no wait it's nothing like that i don't know why i brought that up at all <laughs> they drink a lot of coffee on the show so I, yeah that's it they drink a lot of coffee congratulations on being you mike wilmot is one of the big stars of this festival you certainly have blown me away the twice i've seen you and to go on with such energy and such great material that hits every time isn't easy because there's a lot of people who kind of have one good gag and then fill for a few minutes and then do another good one it's trial and error and luckily i uh, i don't really write anything down I just, it's, uh, if it sticks to the wall, I keep it. <laughs> There's a moral for this comedy festival. Mike Wilmot, thanks for talking to me. Wes, thanks a lot.